The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show with the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten and head coach Frankie DeBusk. The Frankie DeBusk Show is presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, the home of the big deal, located on the Elevity Bypass in Greenville. And brought to you in part by Applebee's, your neighborhood bar and grill. Applebee's, eating good in the neighborhood. Sodexo, a worldwide leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. By Green Coach Tours, celebrating their 66th anniversary. By Consumer Credit Union, with three convenient locations in Greenville and Moss High. Creekside Markets, pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Greenville Federal Bank, Greenville Federal Bank is banking made easy. Laughlin Memorial Hospital, whatever you do, do it well. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Morristown, Jonesboro, Johnson City, Cleveland, and Greenville. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Special consideration from Comcast Cable. And now, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. The Tusculum Pioneers and the Mars Hill Lions met for the 28th time this past Saturday, and the Pioneers fall to the Mars Hill Lions by a final score of 23 to 20 in overtime. Thrilling contest. John Rick throws five interceptions in the contest, or I should say the Tusculum Pioneers came away with five takeaways, but unable to convert except on one of those takeaways. The Tusculum Pioneers, Bo Cordell, a career low in passing, just under 180 yards. B.J. Spradlin runs for a single game at school best, 36 carries, but only 99 yards in the contest. It's a Tusculum Pioneer defense, though. They put a lot of pressure on John Richt, as you're going to see in this football contest. Uh, this defense right now really playing good for the Tusculum Pioneers. Welcome in Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk. Devastating, heartbreaking, however you want to look at it. Um, you, have, you have guys making tremendous plays. We, we joked about it a little bit. And then you have guys making some, uh, some silly mistakes. And I think that's the difference between a really good football team right now and the football team that you happen to be. That's, that's why we're sitting at 2-7, uh, and seven, Brian. Unfortunately, we're, uh, we're killing ourselves. We're making too many mistakes. Um, you know, we've we're, we got to quit using the young, young player uh, reason that it's happening. But our, uh, our football team is, uh, we really made some strides and we're playing so much better defensively, uh, but we made some mistakes. You know, if, if you told me we're going to hold the uh, Mars Hill to under 100 yards rushing, uh, we were going to get five interceptions from their quarterback, we were not going to turn it over one time on offense, uh, we were going to rush the football for over 120 yards, I feel like we're going to win the ball game. But uh, we're making a mistake here and there that's really putting us in a bad situation and uh, they, they capitalized and we didn't, and uh, we were in it with an opportunity to win it, which uh, we haven't been in the last couple of weeks. So I think we're getting better, but we're, uh, we're still finding ways not to accomplish that number one goal of getting a win. You knew going into the contest that uh, John Rick and that offense, electric. I mean, they have some guys at wide receiver that, you know, maybe we, they, we haven't seen in a couple of years. They have a guy back there in the backfield. It's not Jonas Randolph, but... Uh, you know, he's averaging 124 yards per game, and you hold him 50 yards below that. Uh, you really got after him. You knew that uh, uh, you are going to have to make some plays. You did that, and putting pressure on John Rick seemed to really frustrate him through much of the game. We had a really good plan defensively. I think our defense staff did a good job getting our kids ready to play. Uh, I think our two nose guards right now, Damian Herring and Adam Winbush, are both performing very, very well, put a lot of pressure uh, on their inside people and, and stopped the run as well as got a little pressure on the quarterback. Uh, I feel like we're flying around, making some things happen, understanding our gap responsibility. Um, we still made a few mistakes. There was three plays in the ball game that we'd like to have back, but I think we've said that time and time again. Uh, we're minimizing that number somewhat. Um, three is probably the lowest number we've talked about. We got most of our goal, defensive goals on Saturday. Uh, unfortunately, again, I told our football team after the game how very proud of them I was because we fought and we came over to Mars Hill very easily could have laid down. Very easily could have just said, uh, you know, we're not supposed to win. Their record's better than ours, but told them how proud I was of them. Uh, ultimately, you, you come to win the ball game. Mm -hmm. 
we didn't win, so it's not okay. We should have won the game. We're expected to win. That's what we do for a living. That's why they play the game. That's why we coach, is to win. We didn't, so it's not okay that we didn't win the game. But I was very pleased with their effort, their demeanor, their approach, especially from a defensive standpoint. There's only so many moral victories uh, for the Tuscaloosa Pioneers. They fall to Mars Hill, hold the number two team in the region to just 23 points in an electric offense, or has been an electric offense this year. I had to go to overtime to get the victory and stay 6-3 and three and still tied atop the league table as the uh, Lenore Ryan Bears get a win on Saturday as well. We'll come back. We'll take a look at your first quarter highlights when the Frankie DeBus Show continues after this. Presented by Gateway Forward, Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville. Applebee's 2 for 20 is back and fresher than ever. Whoa. Hey, Chris. Nice. Hi, Jesse. Hey. Ready to order? Yep, 2 for 20. One appetizer, two entrees, and layers of fresh flavor. So, who's paying this week? Uh, call it in the air. Tails. <laughs> Pony of Palmer. Aww. So, come on in for new favorites like new creamy chicken fettuccine carbonara, new bruschetta chicken, or classics like the seven ounce house sirloin. That's one appetizer, two entrees, 20 bucks. You got off easy, my friend. It's the freshest oh, 2 for 20 yet, only at Applebee's. Now serving half price appetizers late night. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. The Tusculum Pioneers and the Mars Hill Lions meeting this past Saturday from Mir Stadium. And you had about 12 different titles for, for where we were. It's the old Mir Stadium, as we used to know it, the Ammons Family Athletic Center now. The Tusculum Pioneers on the road. They've lost two straight to Mars Hill. Last year was a 47-37 final. Harlan Hill Trophy winner Jonas Randolph carried the ball 49 times for 323 yards, basically uh, winning the title right there, becoming the first South Atlantic Conference player to win the Harlan Hill Trophy. Gone is Jonas Randolph. John Rick is taking over. He's thrown for over 2,200 yards. He's got another 1,000-yard back in the backfield. But the Pioneer defense made them look a little weak. Let's take a look at your first quarter highlights, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Again, Brian, I thought our defensive football team really responded well. Uh, Tremendous challenge for them. You're playing a, a football team that runs it exceptionally well, and they uh, they got started here, and we were flying around and making plays. And I think that's big Adam Winbush in there, one of our freshmen from over around the Nashville area, Cane Ridge High School. Excited about what Adam's bringing to the table, learning to play a little bit. And here's one of our seniors making a big play, Aaron Morgan. <clears throat> uh, don't look forward to Aaron leaving uh, leaving us. He's a senior from out in Los Angeles. Uh, We'll be playing his uh, last home contest Saturday against Carson Newman, and he's just a great kid. And you know we're flying. There's Luke Harris getting in on some action. Again, Aaron Morgan. You know we're we're really doing a great job from a defense standpoint right here, stoning them early. Luke Harris with six tackles on the day. He's one of the 15 players in school history with over 200 tackles for his career. Pioneers force a punt, and they'll get the ball. And this is. It's, it's the nothing new look, but it's definitely what has worked, and uh, Tusculum taking what has been given to them. B.J. Spradlin will take over more as the every eight, everyday guy, I like what Trey McCoy brings to the uh, the offensive table right here, as he gets you a good eight to nine yards, and Trey with a, a career best in receiving yards on Saturday. Well, we decided we were going to try to uh, you know establish the run a little bit. Uh, haven't had a lot of success in some areas offensively, so we went in there feeling like we could. Try to run the football and was really pleased with B.J. Spradlin and Trey McCoy's effort to, you know, for them to run the ball. We got to have some some great job, do a great job up front, and we got hats on hats early from an offensive perspective, offensive line perspective, and didn't do it as well late. But there's Justin Houston earlier there, number three, making a big catch, and getting us a first down on third down, and we toss it out there to B.J. Our guys doing a great job blocking, and 
converting. They do a good job there getting a little stuff on us. And one of the few days that B.J. didn't gain positive yards on a handoff. Yeah, B.J.'s only lost now four and a half yards to scrimmage for his career. Two and a half of those yards came in this football game. And for a long time, he averaged uh, the first couple of drives about five yards per carry. You knew that Marcel put pressure on you, number 33, who later changed his jersey to number 84 uh, with the uh, sack on Bo, his 13th tackle behind the line. Then you, uh, Riverboat Gambler, this play is so open, it's ridiculous. Yeah, we uh, made a, a great call here. Just uh, had worked on it for a couple of weeks. And man, we had a guy open there, our punter, Andy Rossetti, just got a little excited and overthrew Matt uh, Levine there. To, could have been a difference in the ball game. We've got to throw and catch that. Uh, we didn't execute there like we hoped we would either. And uh, I was really proud of how Andy responded and punted the ball well. But we've got to make that, uh, make that throw when we have that opportunity. All right, so Marcia will take over. And Darian Crank from the outside. Davis didn't see him coming. Darian's made a couple of big hits the last couple of games. Great play by Darian Crank, a uh, sophomore that we're expecting to get better and better and keep making plays for us. And excited about what he brings to the table. Uh, flying around, making plays, putting a little pressure on John Reck. And ball goes up in the air. And Aaron Morgan somehow comes down with it. And, uh, you know, when you make that, fun, uh, that fake punt call and it don't work, it's always good to get the ball back quickly from a head coach's perspective. But really, really proud of, uh, of our kids flying around and coming up with the football. John Rick threw five interceptions in the game. That's the second time this year he's thrown five interceptions in a football game. So the Pioneers take over close to midfield and hand it off to Trey McCoy. Uh, this is a, our B.J. Spradlin. This is a Pioneer football team, again, that uh, against Newberry had some success running the football. And, uh, you know, a lot of this comes with the fact that uh, the receivers are dropping some passes, so there has to be some type of a consistency somewhere. And again, very early, B.J. Spradlin found some openings. Getting us a first down again, moving the chains. We get inside the 30-yard line. B.J.'s running hard. The kid's up front. Uh, we've uh, Big Charlie Phillips got his first start in there at guard and really proud of David Davis. We had to move David to tackle and get his first action at tackle and actually did a really good job for us. Here's Kenny Funny hitting it, going downhill, getting us a big first down. Uh, we might have got a holding penalty there, unfortunately, but you know, we're giving the effort that we're giving. I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, you know, here Bo buys, steps up and buys some time and thought we were going to throw and catch that one. They did a good job putting pressure on us and covering our guys up in the, in the back end. And there's third down and didn't convert. We got to catch that football there by Matt and uh, decide to go for it on fourth. And Matt Levine makes a big play, good protection up front, and Bo makes a good throw. Again, still the first quarter, and the, the field is heavily tilted to the east end zone there at Mars Hill, down there to the left. And, uh, Matt Levine, his first career receiving touchdown, his second career touchdown of his Pioneer career. Happy for Matt there. His, uh, his former high school coach from over there in the uh, Anderson, South Carolina area, Coach Ted Luckadoo, a very high quality individual who's retired, was at the ball game to see his Anderson, South Carolina guys. We got several of them on our team and was happy that uh, Coach Luckadoo could see Matt make that big play. Only catch for Levine on the day. It was for a touchdown. It went for 32 yards. On fourth and 15, the Pioneers at the end of the first quarter take a seven to nothing lead. Back with your second quarter highlights after this, presented by the Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville. Your Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for over 65 years and is the official carrier of Tunsculum College Athletics. If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure. Visit online at greencoach.com. Showtime. Uh -huh. You know what it is. Everything we do, we do it big. Uh -huh. Screaming that's not When we step up on the field, that's not small town, but we still do it very big. Back in ours, back in ours, back in ours, back in ours. We grind all for the rings with the diamonds on it. Back in ours, back in ours, back in ours, back in ours.
Welcome back to the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. The Pioneers have a 7 to nothing lead at the end of the first quarter as they hold Mars Hill to yet another punt. We'll take a look and pick up the action in the second quarter with the Pioneers, with the football and driving. Second quarter, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Not only we have football and driving, Brian, we're actually up 7 to nothing, feeling pretty good about things. Uh, and our, our defense is flying around making plays, and offensively we're doing what we have to do. And here we just overthrow X just by a hair. I thought he could reach out there and get his hands on that football, but hard to see exactly where it was at. But we need to be able to make that play convert. Here's big Trey McCoy, a true freshman uh, from Anderson County High School down the road, trying to get some, get his feet wet. Get his, he got more snaps on Saturday than he's gotten to date, and uh, expecting good things out of him. So the Pioneers, again, that uh, bubble screen, Xavion Smith, uh, looking inside, Pioneers will be uh, whistled for an illegal block. So back them up, and they just elected to back you up because they didn't want to give it to you fourth and short, and Justin Houston with the, the big catch across the middle. Probably his best catch of the year. Great job going up, catching the football with both hands, running across the middle of the field there. And Justin's also a true freshman. Uh, we're expecting great things out of these guys. And there's big Trey McCoy pounding it down inside the 20, uh, giving us a chance to uh, move the chains. Pioneers convert on third and 15, pick up 30 yards, and then Trey McCoy will go up the middle for a, another six-yard gain for the Tuscaloosa Pioneers. And then it's just a turnaround and hand it off right now. This is a Pioneer football team. That Spradlin, 99 yards on the day. Trey McCoy, 35 yards on the day. Bo Cordell actually netted eight on the day, and the Pioneers ran for 141, holding the Mars Hill Lions to just 96 yards on the day. Here's Trey McCoy on a play that hadn't worked for us this year a whole lot, but Trey McCoy and Bo Cordell seem to make it work. Yeah, it was a good throw, great catch, good job blocking by our two guys downfield, gets us down inside the one, and we get some movement up front. BJ does a great job giving great effort. We need to really hang on that football there, but it was a good call. He did get across the goal line, but we don't need to leave that up to the officials to decide, but great job punching it in. BJ Spradlin again with the touchdown, and the Mars Hill Lions would waste little time getting into the end zone. Donta Jennings, uh, he was their best player on the day. Um, and before this is all said and done with, I don't know, he may end up being a conference player of the week type guy because he had that type of a day, which would be the first this year against the Pioneers. So it looks as if the game is just going to kind of come to an end here. It's the end of the first half. They're just handing it off, and then all of a sudden they do this. We've got to make a better play. I mean, you know, Catron Becton is one of our junior corners, and we know it's late in the first half. There's only a few seconds to go, and Catron lets him get to buy him. We, that's unacceptable performance. We've got to do better. Now we step up and make some plays and do a little better job, but uh, we shouldn't even be in this situation. Donta Jennings again with the 73-yard catch, and then Becton does respond. The first pass, trust me, went his way, and he deflected it away, and then this one, Knocked away, and now John Rick under some heavy pressure and throws it basically to Luke Harris. Great job by Luke being where he's supposed to be and getting this big interception <coughs> right there before the half. Uh, you know, it could have been a big momentum swing, and the way things were going for us, we needed to be able to hang on the football. And great defensive stand there once they got inside the 10 yard line. Luke Harris will come up with his third career interception right there. It was interesting to know, just want you to know this. Last time we won on the road, Luke Harris had an interception in the second quarter. Dang, you should have told us that Saturday right in the middle of the game. We thought it was happening <laughs> right there in the middle of the game, that's for sure, because Luke Harris had that pick in the first half. Same situation last time the Pioneers did win on the road, by the way, was 2010 at Catawba in that thriller uh, at, uh, in Salisbury, North Carolina. All right, we still got a half to play here and some. We'll talk, we'll, we'll talk about that when we return right after this. We're at halftime, and the Pioneers lead at 14. Frankie DeBunch Show continues after this, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. 
In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. And to pass, this will be Trainer and Beckton picked it off. 35, 20, to the 10, to the 5, to the house. Touchdown, Jelly Beckton on his first career interception. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. As we went to break, the uh, Tusculum Pioneers led 14 to 7. Well, now they lead 14 to 10 as Marcel did kick the field goal in that first half. So it's a 14 to 10 lead. Marcel will have the football. The last throw thrown by John Rick was picked off. We start the second half with the Marcel Lions with the football and John Rick throwing the ball. Third quarter highlights presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. We, we talked a little bit defensively. I thought we'd done a good job stopping the run, and they would come out and try to throw it at us. I didn't know they would try to throw the first one deep. And here's Catron Beckton. Now, this is what he's expected to do. What a big-time interception. Great play, great elevation, going up and getting the ball with both hands like you're supposed to do it. You know, uh, Jelly's proven that he can make plays. He's just got to be more consistent with it. That's where he is right now as a football player. Beckton's second career interception. His first was returned to the house against West Georgia. Pioneers unable to move the ball offensively. Rossetti would punt it away 53 yards and pin Mars Hill deep after a penalty. So Mars Hill would take over Shaq Davis for a couple and Chaz Story with a nice play up the middle. Great play there by Chaz. Excited about what Chaz is able to do. He's just such a great kid. Tries real hard. A sophomore from here in Greenville, Tennessee and uh, loves the game. I'm glad he's out there getting some snaps. Chaz Story again with the next stop and then uh, just a little blown coverage again. It was big play after big play on Saturday for Mars Hill. We got to do a little better job here. We got them pinned deep in our own territory and it's third down and they make a big play and you know, those are the kind of things that's happening to us as a football team. We've got to find a way to keep that from happening. And you know, we're, uh, here's uh, Evan Dansby at corner over there being where he's supposed to be and keeping another big play from happening. Here we start stopping the run a little better. Our defensive front and linebackers are flying around. All right, uh, the Pioneers, uh, seven tackles was the leading tackler on the day for the Pioneers. Again, don't, don't quite get it. Uh, Jasper Mason did have a huge day, 21 tackles, but no guy had a, a bigger day than Jelly Beckton did. Two interceptions on the day for Jelly, obviously a career best, and that's his third of the day. A little miscommunication between Rick and Jennings once again. Wish he'd have picked that thing off and went to the house, but it was a great play. Happy for him, doing what he's supposed to do there and taking coaching. There's a, a big uh, Jonathan Wimberly uh, mm -hmm. holding his own there against their tackle and causing that young man to slip up. Just a great effort by, by Jonathan. Glad to have him back after an injury uh, a couple weeks ago, and here we hold him to an incomplete pass, make him punt it. You know, things are going pretty good for us right now. Feeling like we got momentum on our side. And then, unfortunately, we put the ball on the ground, something we cannot do. Uh, K-Tron's got to do a better job catching that football in that situation. You made a comment to me earlier about Mars Hill being 5-3. and three. You said if we had been 5-3, and three, the things that are happening against us aren't happening. Mars Hill, uh, rigged, hasn't looked good. He's throwing this ball away. He's under pressure, and I show this because they've converted fourth down on the drive. That was third down. They get a holding infraction in the end zone, make it first down and five, hand it off to the fullback with all sorts of momentum, and they actually take their first lead. Again, Brian, we, uh, we fought and battled, and we're making mistakes here a little bit along the way, and uh, we're not doing as good as we need to, and here their uh, defensive end gets to bow, and you know, we're, we're back to wondering what's going to happen. We've got to worry about our football team and worry about how we play. And great job here by Trey McCoy. Uh, great job catching this shovel pass, getting us a big first down, getting it down to the 50-yard line and moving the chains. All right, the Pioneers had three big plays on the day, 32, 30, and 28, just something that we're not necessarily used to. But it still is a young group trying to figure out what they're doing, where they're going out there uh, on the field lots of times. And a lot of it is not just that they're, they're youthful and young. It's the fact that they don't have the communication with the others just yet. Kenny Funny on the outside, Trey McCoy with a nice spin move between the tackles uh, to pick up some extra yardage. And this Pioneer drive, again, down three already, as you can tell, into the red zone, and a lot of it coming on the ground. And then an unfortunate thing for a, a talented player, and it, I don't know if it changes the dynamic of our offense, but Matt Levine, um, can't do this. No, he's got to keep his composure. I know he's getting pushed down there and uh, just either let the go guy, uh, guy go, but you got to be smart. Unfortunately for Matt, he's not, uh, not using his head there and got to be a little smarter football player. So Matt is actually ejected for the game, and now the Pioneers, the uh, vertical element there at wide receiver, it's not 
They don't have it. We're a little vertically challenged at times with the, guy, the personnel. Obviously, at West Powell at 6'10", we, we have it. I don't, you didn't see it there, but Justin Houston was taller than West Powell, could have been on that ball. He actually uh, doesn't come down with it, Pioneers, uh, with the penalty, and so they continue to move the chains. Now, we've just started the fourth quarter here, as you may be able to tell by the uh, adjustment, and the Pioneers face it first down and goal again. They're inside the 10-yard line uh, on first down. They've handed it to BJ for a couple of times, but Mars Hills may determine, uh, have, to have determined that they aren't going to allow something to go up the middle. Yeah, we've got to do a better job here punching it in. We did it, we did it early, made some good things happen early, and here we, uh, we just don't execute and third down. And fortunately, our kicker comes in. Logan Cornelius does a good job for us and made all of his kicks on the day. And uh, we say that because I think that's the first time or maybe the second time we've been able to pull that off this year. But we get first and goal inside the four. We've got to score a touchdown. You notice it was second time this year that he has been able to do that. And Logan was solid, uh, no question about that, especially the kick that he'll have in overtime coming up. Uh, it wasn't easy, it was a blustery day for a lot of the day, and then it seems as if toward the end of the game, after the win went away, it, it came back. Let's we'll take a look and see what happens. The rest of the fourth quarter, we're tied at 17 in the fourth quarter when we return right after this. The Frankie DeBun Show, presented by Gateway Forward, Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville. Creekside Market has three locations in Southern Greene County to serve, so while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway. Creekside Markets in Greene County. Consumer Credit Union. Loans? We can do that. Three locations in Greenville and Mossheim. At Consumer Credit Union, everybody can join. Visit online at ConsumerCreditUnion.com. This will be Marshall. Makes a move at the 10 to the 5. Walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Pioneers. Brian Marshall's second career touchdown. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBun Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. The Tusculum Pioneers and the Mars Hill Lions are nodded at 17. We've already seen the fourth quarter field goal made by Logan Cornelius. Now we're going to pick up the action. Mars Hill with the ball and driving just a bit. Ch chatted with defensive coordinator Mike Iese earlier this week, and he started the year about, oh, say maybe six weeks ago, as I noticed it, with about a three-by-five note card with some plays on it. I talked to him this week, and he's got a normal 8 by 11 piece of notepad paper that had some plays on it. He says, our guys are starting to understand my blitz package. I'd say so. We pick up the action. Blitz package right up the middle, putting pressure on John Richt. The fourth quarter presented by Gateway Forward, Lincoln Mazda. Great way to start here. Uh, excited about this big play. Uh, putting some heat on them. That's Aaron Morgan there coming with some pressure. Uh, jumps and makes great timing. Ball's tipped, and there's Kashad. They call him Big Country Lions on the interception. I wanted that big sucker to score with it, but glad he got his hands on it. Glad he was running like he was running, and uh, just phenomenal effort by Aaron Morgan and Kashad Lions there to get the uh, offensive the ball again. And tremendous courage by John Rick to, uh, to make that tackle. My goodness, he had a guy named Big Country. Uh, that is some courage. Well, the Pioneers unable to move the football on that drive, as you may have noticed. Then Marcel would get the ball back, and they'd be unable to move the football. So the Pioneers get it, and again, they continue to go to the running game. But, Coach, you notice that the running game just right now isn't there. B.J. Spradlin early was averaging five yards a carry. Now he's down to about a yard per carry. Unfortunately, we're not putting hats on hats up front. Didn't finish uh, the day like we wanted to. Um, they started – they had a good plan. They had a good scheme, but uh, – we still have to convert in those situations. All right, Marcio gets the stop, and then they get the football back. And Shaq Davis right there, you, that, I'm sure that terrified you. He's dancing around in that backfield. He's, he's extremely talented. And he's extremely gifted. Uh, this is a, a good job by Jelly Becton defending him. And then they get it inside the five. Again, time is ticking away. Mars Hill and Tushkill are tied at 17. And maybe the biggest play of the game for Mars Hill right here. 
Yeah, they catch that ball. It's probably over. We got a corner that's not doing his job. Evan Dansby's got him. He's got to cover him. Got to do a better job than that. Fortunately, it gives us a little life. Uh, they end up uh, kicking the field goal there. To yeah, no, missed they missed it. it. Yeah. That's right. That's the one they missed to keep it 17-17 and give us a chance to go into overtime. So the Pioneers um, get the big stop. Really, Mars Hill just uh, some mental mistakes more than anything. Pioneers have the ball. You think, all right, now they're going to do it. They're going to take over. Nope. And they're going to ask. And they need to, and they get a huge punt out of Andy Rossetti flipping the field because Mars Hill's thinking, we still got time, we're going to do something. And uh, they third down, good coverage, and then fourth down comes up. And again, an electric player, Dimitri Holmes for Mars Hill, freshman offensive player of the year from a couple of years ago, and uh, he can't get to the, to the boundary. It's a great job there by us keeping them from converting on fourth down. And make, I'm over there making sure it's marked like it should be. And, we're getting to get the ball back offensively. Great job by our defensive football team. Uh, you know, we, we were just, uh, as I was talking to the offensive coach on the headset, our defense is playing their hind end off, and we're not doing it offensively. Uh, fortunately, we do what we have to to put us into overtime, but we got to do a little better job offensively when we get in that predicament. Biners took over with 44 seconds to play, and we're unable to score out of it. So we go to the overtime period, the first since Brevard from a couple of years ago where the Pioneers started off. Gareth Rollins kicking a field goal, but uh, they fell in overtime. Last win for the Pioneers overtime, 1999. Happened to also be the game in which Aaron Clarity ran for 35 carries. Yeah, 36 carries for B.J. Spradlin in this overtime game. Bo Cordell under a lot of pressure. Uh, by Mars Hill. You see the incompletion. Now Cornelius comes in, really one of his longest kicks of the year. Great job snapping it, holding it, kicking it. 34 yarder there, right down the middle. Gives us a chance to go up. We'd like to score a touchdown there in that first overtime, and <clears throat> unfortunately we didn't. And, um, you know, Mars Hill made a very, very big play there at the end of the ball game, and they deserve a chance to celebrate. They made one more play than we did and uh, played a good football game, but wasn't able to come away with the win. Trust me, it happened. It was a nice little bootleg pass to the fullback. Hughes catches or has his second touchdown of the game. Seldom used fullback that comes away with yet another touchdown. Mars Hill goes crazy. They should. Uh, they're five and three. You made an interesting comment to me. You know, if we had been five and three going into the game, we don't have the, probably the mistakes that happen. It's just weird how that actual that statement is is actually so true. Well, I mean, I communicated with their head coach after the game and. He said, we just got luckier than you did today. We had a great plan. He thought so. And we played harder than they did, probably outplayed them. But again, ultimately, you got to win. And we didn't win. So, you no know, moral victories are, are history as far as I'm concerned. John Richt in the game, 22 of 53 through 31 incompletions on the day. But 369 yards because Dante Jennings had such a big day. Eight receptions, 212 yards, had a long of 73. They had plays of 73, of, of 50, and 48. That's Pioneer offense of old, but on this day, the Pioneers just couldn't get the ball into the end zone enough. But they take Mars Hill, the number one team in our league and the number two team in the region, to overtime. We'll come back and we'll meet some of the players responsible for that. Pioneers fall to Mars Hill in overtime, 23-20. to 20. The Frankie DeBus Show continues after this, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville. Your Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back in to the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. The Pioneers fall to Mars Hill. Hard-fought contest this past Saturday in the mountains of Mars Hill, North Carolina, 23-20 in overtime. 
time now to meet some of our players of the game. We're going to start on offense. A couple of running backs that really are thrown into the focal point now of this offensive attack, and both of them are our players of the week. And we'll start with B.J. Spradlin, sophomore out of Greenville, Tennessee, from Greenville High School. Football game, he sets a career best in rushing attempts per game. 36 carries in the contest. I told you the last time that actually happened, or the school record was established, came in an overtime game against Jacksonville back in 1999 in the DeBusk era. Aaron Clarity carried the ball 35 times in that win. B.J. Spradlin carries it 36 times, 99 yards, a touchdown, a long of nine, and a 2.8 yards per carry average. Trey McCoy, the freshman out of Andersonville, Tennessee, and Anderson County High School, finished with career best on the day. Nine carries, 35 yards, also three receptions for 42 yards and a long of 28 on the offense for our Sodexo Offensive Players of the Week. Our Greenville Light and Power Defensive Players of the Week, Luke Harris, the senior out of Floyd, Virginia, Floyd County High School, finished the day with six tackles and an interception. At 79 tackles on the season now, one for loss, a pass, four pass breakups and a pick. And he is, again, one of 15 players in school history with over 200 tackles for his career with 208 and three interceptions for his career. Adam Wimbush, the redshirt freshman out of Antioch, Tennessee from Cane Ridge High School. Second consecutive week for Adam as our player of the week, and it comes from the middle of the defense. Four tackles, and on the season now, 21 tackles, a tackle for loss, and a forced fumble. And how good is the middle of the defense playing? Well, we've got three defensive players of the week, and our third is Damian Heron, the junior out of Stockbridge, Georgia, out of Martin Luther King High School. Finished the day with three tackles, a tackle for loss, but responsible for keeping the conference's leading rusher in Shaq Davis, he and Adam Wimbush, to 50 yards below his season average as he rushes for under 100 yards. Only the second time this year, but uh, the second lowest output on the season. For Damian Herring, for his career, 84 tackles and six of those for loss. Green Coach Tour Special Teams Players of the Week. Well, it's kind of a kicking duel, I and mean, you don't normally see this. Guys that come in and kick field goals, and another guy that comes in, kicks field goals. Matter of fact, I joked a little bit with Coach DeBus this week, and I said, why do you do the kickoff the way you do the kickoff? And he says, it's because we've got a guy that can put it up there and, and, and leave, his, leave it up there. We don't have to cover it. He can put it exactly where we need to put it, and it goes high. We get down there and cover it, we only give up about four yards of return. Well, they've finally, really done a very good job with that this week. Both of them are our players of the week. We'll start with our place kicker of the sophomore out of Chattanooga, Tennessee from East Hamilton High School. It's Logan Cornelius. Was perfect on extra points and on field goals. Went two for two with a long of 34. Logan, by the way, is the school's all-time percentage leader in extra points. Brandon Burke, he's the redshirt freshman out of Jonesboro, Tennessee from Daniel Boone High School. And he averaged 48 and a half yards per kick on kickoffs, but Brandon really does a good job with the hang time from the tee off the turf. And like a punter, you need the hang time to allow your gunners to get down there and cover. Pioneers did not give up a big return on the day at all. We turn our attention to our call of the game. Typically it's a reserve piece where you have a very good offensive play. Well, on this day, defense was able to shine for the Pioneers, and we have a guy that makes an offensive type play and a, a big guy that's rather offensive when he runs. All seriousness now, all kidding aside, all seriousness are Andrew Johnson Bank calls of the game. Jelly Becton and a guy we call Big Country. Rick to play action pass. He's looking to go deep. Becton in good coverage. Picks it off at the 31-yard line. That's locating the ball, young fellow. Good job, Jelly Becton. Rick works from the gun. This pass is tipped and picked off. Kashad Lyons at the 50. Lyons down inside the 40 to the 35. Katron Becton along with Kashad Lyons officially. We like calling them by their nickname because they prefer it as well. Our Andrew Johnson Bank calls of the game. It's time now to go a little deeper inside the numbers. It's time for our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. As you look at it, Pioneers offensively, not bad as far as the rushing game is concerned, but Bo Cordell is his worst passing output of his Pioneer football career. Pioneers run for 141 yards on 55 carries. Mars Hill. Uh, they balance, there's for sure, but they're held about 80 yards below their season average as a team rushing. They're held below 100 yards, 29 carries for 96 yards. 
Passing the football, Bo Cordell went 17 to 33. No interceptions, one touchdown. Now 26, uh, make that 27 touchdown passes in his 33 career football games. 176 yards passing, however, and um, only about 10.4 yards per completion. Meanwhile, John Rick had 31 incompletions and five interceptions, but he threw for 369 yards and a touchdown and averaged 16.8 per completion. Total offense, the Pioneers ran it 88 plays in the game for 317 yards. Marcel, 82 yard, eight plays, pardon me, for 465 yards on the day. For the Pioneers, time of possession, again, huge. 34 minutes, 53 seconds to Marcel's 25.07. And on third downs, Tusculum just seven for 20. Marcel was seven for 18. In the red zone, Tusculum three for three. Marcel went four for six on the afternoon. Bitter defeat as the Pioneers fall to the hands of uh, the Mountain Border War, one of their great rivals, the Mars Hill Lions, by a final score of 23 to 20. Mars Hill has now won three straight in the series, and it's the 11th win for the Mars Hill Lions overall in the series. When we return with more of the Frankie DeBus Show, we sit down with Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus. It is one of the great rivalries, and it's the second oldest rivalry in the state of Tennessee. It's Tusculum and Carson New. That's when the Frankie DeBus Show continues after this, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Dean, what's wrong? We all want to go to the game, but I just don't think they have a car big enough for all of us. Don't worry, Dean. My dad's inside Gateway right now buying us a new SUV that can fit all of us. What do you think, guys? Yeah, let's go! go. Hey, Ty, you ready to go to the game? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Dad, but we have some new people wanting to go to the game. Well, let's go! Yeah! I need that world. I'm Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, asking you, like I do my son Ty, to support the Tusculum College Athletics all year long. And for your next car buying experience, please visit Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Go Pioneers! The best deal in the neighborhood just got better with more to love on the two for 20 mil only at Applebee's. Applebee's is a proud sponsor of the Frankie DeBus TV show and side of the Frankie DeBus radio show. Applebee's on the bypass in Greenville. There's no place like the neighborhood. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Welcome back in to the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda, rejoined by Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBus. Tusculum, a tough defeat. You turn the chapter, you move on. And it's a great week, and if you can't get up for this game, uh, you shouldn't even come to Tusculum College in the first place. I, I know it's been tough and it's been, it's been difficult, but a chance here at the end to finish two games remaining. Carson Newman is on Saturday. Well, it's, uh, you know, I, I told our kids we, we compete against Carson Newman in recruiting. We talk a lot about them. Uh, you know, they, they may not be the, uh, the ultimate rival, but they are right down the road. And uh, it's exciting for us to get a play another home game against Carson Newman. And hopefully the weather's going to be decent. Uh, expect a big crowd. They're 6-2, uh, and two, playing really well. Um, be nice to be the spoiler here. Uh, I think uh, we're playing good enough to win the game. I don't know if we will, but we're playing good enough to. Hopefully we can just keep getting better, keep putting ourselves in position to, to make plays and improve and, and see how this thing comes out. Rivard gave Carson Newman a good fight in the first half. 7-7 seven, seven was the score. Of course, Carson Newman to run this split back veer option attack. Haywood last week, though, threw it 17 times. And I noticed that a little bit against Wingett. Um, sometimes they made some bad decisions. And when he drops back to pass, uh, a little susceptible there. It's not your typical strong Carson Newman team, but there's still a team that they're a system team and they're going to bring it and, and make things very difficult for your defense. Well, uh, the reason you're seeing a young man throw the football is uh, teams are playing. We're having success stopping the run. And uh, you got if you can tone down the run and make them try to throw it, you, you legitimately have a shot. So that'll be our plan. And they got a good Russian football team with good players. And uh, we will definitely be challenged. We've, we've talked about how much we've improved each and every week. Uh, from a defensive standpoint, well, now we're going to get tested, and we'll see exactly if we can be alignment and assignment sound and tackle the dive when it's ran at us and take the quarterback when it's your responsibility and take the pitch when you got him. So we'll see how we respond. All right, I know you're a quarterback. You're a guy that's used to success, and you've got a guy that's a 
First team all conference, freshman offensive player of the year. He's All American. He's a Harlan Hill Trophy candidate. Um, two years ago, he gets injured. Right now, what's going on with Bo Cordell's head? How do you how do you make positive things happen for your young quarterback? Well, Bo's a great great person to begin with, and you know he's struggling because we're not having success. I don't I don't think he's really bothered by his personal successes right now. Uh, I'm just proud that he's stepping up and doing the things we need him to do and asking him to do and. A uh, very unselfish football player and a quality individual, even more so than a player. And I hope he uh, is learning as we're going through this process and hope he has two great weeks to finish. All right, this is the week the Mossy Creek Pioneer Blood Bowl drive continues. Pioneers won this thing four, four straight years. And obviously by the time you're singing this, we'll see what happens. That's what they do this week. They do other things as well. It's just a, it's just a great overall rivalry. Now, be nice to win this football game. This whole series, second oldest in the state of Tennessee, is a little bit lopsided. But since Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk has come on board, Pioneers have had a few more of those W's against the Carson Newman Eagles. And typically, at Pioneer Field, it is a one-point thriller. Two years ago, Gareth Rowland stoinked one off the left upright from 50 yards. It would have been good from 60. And that's just the type of game that it seems to be. Well, it's always fun. And it's Saturday. Join us here from Pioneer Field at the Nicewanger Sports Complex for the great thriller, the second oldest rivalry in the state of Tennessee. It's Tusculum and Carson Newman. They'll kick it off at 1.30. Pioneer Sports Network coverage begins at 12.30 on AM 1450 WSMG worldwide through TusculumPioneers.com, fueled by Red Zone Media, and also in stadium at 90.9 FM. It has been a crazy week as far as Pioneers getting ready for this Carson Newman series, so we hope that you, we will see you on Saturday. For everyone behind the scenes here and for our sponsors, Quentin Talley for Nathan Humbert. He's Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk. Many thanks to Gateway Ford at Lincoln Mazda. Brian Staten saying go Pioneers. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk featuring coaches interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, the home of the big deal. Located on the 11 Bypass in Greenville. And brought to you in part by Applebee's, your neighborhood bar and grill. There's no place like the neighborhood. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Greenville, Morristown, Jonesboro, Johnson City, and Cleveland. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Consumer Credit Union, with three convenient locations in Greenville and Moss High. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Green County. Laughlin Memorial Hospital, whatever you do, do it well. By Green Coach Tour, celebrating their 66th anniversary. Special consideration from Comcast Cable. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.